Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and congratulations to you and to your family for obtaining the speakership of this accust body. Uh, you've worked very hard throughout your 12 years in the General Assembly. You've dedicated your time and your effort to helping the people of Pennsylvania, and I congratulate you and look forward to working with you over the next two years. I also congratulate the members of this historic body, particularly the freshman members who come to the halls of this chamber for the first time. I welcome you, your friends, your family members, and your supporters as we join today to embark upon the journey of the next two years together. Before I became a state legislator at a fairly young age, I was a graduate student at the University of Pennsylvania. And as a graduate student, I took a number of courses from a professor named Dr. John Mulhern. And during one of the courses, Dr. Mulhern described the two very unique perspectives folks engage in the political process in the 21st century in modern America politics. The two perspectives he described first was that of the political scientist. Now, he didn't use the term political scientist in the academic sense. He used the term political scientist very broadly to describe any individual or any organization that sought to analyze and debate the issues of the day, that felt the need or the desire to pontificate on how our communities, our government, our nation, and our world, for that matter, could be or should be. The second perspective he described was that of the political actor. And the political actor's definition was fairly similar to that of the political scientist. They were folks who analyzed and debated the issues of the day, who pontificated on how our communities, our government, our nation, and our world could be or should be. But at the end of the definition of the political actor, he added this. The political actor also has the responsibility to not just discuss how things could be or how sh things should be, but actually determine and make decisions on how things would be. You have the responsibility to actually get things done. Today, particularly our freshman members, move from the arena of a political scientist to the arena of a political actor. And with that transition comes a much greater responsibility in the political process in the 21st century. It's a responsibility probably best described by former President Teddy Roosevelt in a quote that has since been deemed the man in the arena. And it came from a speech entitled Citizenship in a Republic delivered in Paris, France on the 23rd of April, 1910. The quote goes as follows. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done better, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by the dust, the sweat, and the blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who actually does strive to do deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst knows what it's like to fail, but at least fails daring to do so greatly. So that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never know victory nor defeat. My fellow colleagues today, you are the men and women in the arena. You are tasked with the great responsibility to lead this commonwealth. The easy part of the electoral process is now over. And make no mistake, far too many folks in today's political world believe getting elected is the hard part. Becoming one of 203, representing 13 million, is the most difficult part of the journey. You will soon find that is actually the easy part of the journey before you. Celebrating one night in November with your friends and family members is a wonderful moment. But in the end, it is just a moment. You now have a much far greater responsibility. You have a responsibility to govern and a responsibility to make decisions. You have a great opportunity, a grand opportunity to lead this Commonwealth. And you have that opportunity because 65,000 people in each of your communities 
put their faith and their trust in you. They put their faith and their trust in you to make decisions, to make difficult decisions, to make decisions that may not be politically popular on any given day, but are the right thing to do for the future of this Commonwealth. And they put that trust in you to make those decisions not as Republicans, not as Democrats, not as folks representing a big city or a small town or suburban Pennsylvania, but to actually work together with the colleagues who surround you to gather collective wisdom and to have the courage to act as one with our colleagues in the Senate and the governor to actually move our communities and our state forward. And as we debate the issues of the day, and there will be no shortage of issues for us to debate, whether it be job creation, balancing budgets, pension reform, what is and what is not a core function of government, or even our regional or territorial issues important to each of us, we must do so with a great amount of understanding, with an ample amount of humility, and a great deal of respect towards each perspective each member takes, whether it's our own or not. Many of the goals we share are the same. Each and every one of us wants more people working in Pennsylvania. We all want each person to have access to top quality health care at an affordable price. And we all want to lift folks out of poverty into a life of self-sustainability. Our goals are the same. Sometimes we differ on our visions to achieve those goals. And as we debate those different visions, we must make sure we do so with dignity and respect. And in the end, we must allow common sense to be our guide to public policy making. So today, as we celebrate the beginning of this journey together, as we look ahead to the decisions we must make, my only wish, my only hope, and my only prayer for each of us is that we be worthy, that we be worthy of the trust our communities have bestowed upon us, that we be worthy of this grand opportunity we have to lead, and that we be worthy and forever be mindful of the place each and every one of us now has in the history books of Pennsylvania. May God watch over this body and may it continue to bless our families, our friends, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and this great state. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.